Well, here is a short question with a long answer. The question is, would you please explain planes and why they are important to painting? Well, that's not referring to flying, I know. Well, the kind of plane this person is talking about is the kind of plane we see in images um, and it usually means just a flat surface like this. Well, that's one way of looking at it. And you see, you can see this flat surface. It just goes horizontal and vertical. But when I turn it like that, you have a diagonal. And that's usually what causes people, people problems with this thing. It's relatively easy to find when you're looking at architectural structures. So I've got a couple of, these are just illustrations here. Uh, I've got a couple of illustrations, and here we see a diagram of three different planes. Now, planes can only tilt in three different directions. They can tilt uh, so that we have a vertical and a horizontal, or they can tilt so that we have a diagonal, but diagonals, here we go, diagonal, diagonals can tilt in many different directions. And that's usually what gives people problems. So if we can learn to look for the tilt of the plane, that's the first thing we need to do in order to understand planes. But why are they important to painting? Well, they're, one, for one thing, they're important to painting because they will help us to get correct perspective. And in animals and things that have more organic structures, they'll help us to get those structures correct. But another reason they're important is because they will show uh, any image in terms of where the light is shining and where the shadows are. And the lights and shadows really are the things that give more people more problems. So let's just do a little something here so that you can you probably understand that pretty well as far as the architectural structure. But uh, so we have the planes here, and we can see that this plane, this it's vertical this way, but as it moves in this direction, it's moving more in a tilt because it's turning away from us. So a plane that you see completely vertical is going to going to be facing you or plane that you see completely horizontal vertical and horizontal is going to be completely facing you but when you're in the position that you're looking at the side of that plane it's going to be tilted it's going to be more diagonal all right so we see that here in this in this particular illustration so we see this and I can just give you a little bit of a guide here you see that plane's tilted this way this way this way and that way that way. So by tilting that plane then we can get correct perspective. See the same thing happening over here. Tilt, tilt. And you see this plane, this plane because it's turning downward is tilted in this direction and in that direction. All right, so there's the tilt of the planes. Now if you'll notice uh, the illust what the illustration is showing us here is what happens, what you see uh, in terms of light and shadow according to the tilt of the plane. So here this tells us the sun, uh, because we can see this is very light, so we know the sun's hitting there, and the sun's hitting here, and the sun's here and hitting here. So then that tells us that the sun is over there somewhere, over, more over like over here somewhere, causing this to be in shadow and causing this side to be in shadow. So if you look for those things rather than just guess at them, it will help you a whole lot to get not only the, the perspective correct, but also to get the light and shadow correct. Now we see this one's a little bit different. Um, in this one, we, again, you can see how the planes tilt, but you can see because this shadow area right here on the plane, because that shadow area is lower down, then we know that the sun is a little bit more tilted. And the sun would have to be somewhere over there because this is in shadow and this is in shadow and this whole area here is in shadow. So the planes are going to, the way they tilt uh, and the way they cause cast shadows, uh, they're also going to show us where the sun, so there's two important things, where the sun is, where it's hitting and where it's in shadow. So it's imp two important things um, in, in getting the perspective and then also getting the light and shadow correct. All right, so that's easy enough. I think seeing flat planes, once you get that um, notion that they're going to be planes that are tilting, um, and we, once we look for those tilts, that's one thing. But then what about 
What about images that don't have those kinds of planes in them? Well, let's just take a look at another diagram here. Let's slip this one away. Now, most of what we see in nature is going to have some sort of a curve on it or in it. It's going to be made of either a, a kind, some kind of roundness. Let's just call it that way. Normally, we wouldn't think to put those or to, to put those things in planes. But if you do, if you have something like a sphere like this, and then if you mentally divide that sphere into little short planes, they don't have to be this small. But then that will show you how the light is falling on the surface and how it's moving around the image itself. But it would also help you to get uh, pl uh, get the planes or get the images in correct proportion. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. We'll go to another image, or another set of images, I should say. Okay, you have got a rabbit and a chicken. So, how, how would seeing planes correctly help you to uh, draw and or paint a rabbit or a baby chick? Because you would normally you might normally just think of them in terms of roundness. Let's go to the baby chick first because it's kind of not as obvious. But you normally think of, of, a, of this as being round and you might just make that round. You might have trouble getting the structure or the muscular structure correct. Well, if you would imagine, you can see this is a flat plane up here. It's kind of like what we see right up here. Now let's get a different pen, pencil. Let's just show it here. We go there. We go that. And then you can see it turn. You can see it turn by the, see the edge of the chair. You see that that plane turns. And then you can see it turn again. And as you move along the, the structure of the chicken, you can see different kinds of planes turning in different directions. So you see a plane turning here. You see another plane turning here and here like that. And then you come over into the actual belly part. You can see a plane turning here, or in this direction, I should say. Another plane in this direction, another plane in that direction. And if you explore, you explore those shapes and how those shapes are moving in and out and turn them into planes, that will help you then to get the structure of the chicken. So if you, if you did that sort of exploration first, before you began your drawing, it would help you then to get all that, uh, make the right light fall correctly on that chicken and also show its muscular structure. Now that I've done that, you can see how we can do that same thing with the rabbit. So the temptation would be, would be to draw this in like circles first. I've seen, I've seen teachers teach you to do that where you uh, do the geometric shape first. Well, yeah, that may be all right for doing a flat diagram. But if you're really exploring the muscular structure that you're looking at, uh, if you could switch your attention to not the roundness of it, but to how those sh the round how those shapes bend, uh, then you'll come near to get the, getting the muscular structure. Now, for for here, for example, here in the front, see this ends up being almost flat. See it, the angles, this shape angles on either side like that, but the front part of it kind of turns like that. So that, but over here we have something different. We can see muscular structure. Let's get the other pen. Muscular structure. You can see muscular structure moving this way, this way. You can see mus mus muscular structure moving this way and that way. So if you can look to learn to look for the muscular structure of a thing, then you'll show that instead of showing the whole thing as flat or rounded out. In other words, what you look for is what you're going to paint. So let's look at one other thing that really gives people a lot of trouble. And that is rocks. So we'll just take this away. Yeah, you might say rocks and water. But in here we have both kinds of planes. We have, uh, we have the, the planes that would be found in a rounded structure. But we also have planes that would be found in a flat structure. So you can see that here in this rock. In the, see that here in this rock. This is this this is more of a of a, of a plane, a flat plane, relatively flat plane on top. And we'll find that in rocks. Some rocks will have uh, flat planes, and some rocks will have rounded planes, as we see here 
Um, you see actually more flat planes in this photograph, but you see some roundness of the planes in here. So the if you can can look at those in terms of of how those planes move, it helps you then to to paint a rock or to draw a rock. All right. So so we have the flat planes here. And we have the rounded planes here. And let's look at how that, how we would look for that. If you know how to look for it, you know what to look for, then you know how to paint it and how to draw it. All right, so look here. This plane, this plane right here is flat. So you identify it first. Uh, is it flat or is it round? This is a flat plane right here. All right, so which direction is it moving? Well... It seems to be moving sort of in that direction. That tells us how it's tilted from us. And sort of this direction. So you, then that's how you would build the structure. You could build a structure like this. You see I'm drawing on the edges of it here to show you uh, so that you can see how, how the lines would fit into the actual shape. Then you look for, a, you look for an, another set of planes. How many sets of planes does that rock have? That's what people don't look for. They're thinking rock, and they can't see the planes because they're thinking rock. You can see what you look for. So if you look for the planes, you see them. All right, you see another uh, plane, another, yes, relatively flat plane here. You see another one that's got little indentions and things in it there. And actually, we do see another one right there. So if you look for the planes, how they're tilting, and, and their size, of course, then you'll have the structure of the rock. The next thing to look for is how the light is hitting it, and you'll have it. So you see, uh, you can tell because this is lighter up here, the light is hitting it from, well in this case it's from the back, because we see that backlight right here. So the light, there's lots of foliage here of course, the light is coming sort of from the back, it's catching the top right here, so you know that's going to be a lighter value. Then it throws this part right here, dark, in shadow. So you have the shadow values here, and the values not in shadow there. You have the planes, put that together, and you have the rock. The same thing, you can work the same way uh, when you're working with rocks that are more rounded. And especially if you have those little pebbles that are all rounded. Uh, but if you just sort of, this is a little bit difficult to see. Well, here's one that's sort of rounded. Well, you, you, you take the same attitude, instead of just making it round, Look at how it would divide into planes. Let's see if I can do that light enough or with this. So we see a plane moving that way, moving that way, and then moving that way. So we can turn that into a rounded plane and we'll have a rock. Now to show you a little bit more of uh, how that might work. So if you have a rock, like, like this rock right here, um, and your tendency would want to be to round it, try doing it in planes first before you do the rounded part. And so the way that would work, right here, you would, there's a plane, of there, okay, here's a plane, there's a plane, and then uh, where, how much of that plane is in light? So that's, just let's look for that. So we see, oh, we see that plane kind of divided, um, ends right here, tilts right there, goes like that. Then, when we're doing our drawing, we can round out those planes, round out those corners of the plane, and we will have that portion of the rock. Now, rock. Now, let's see what's happening in front. There's a plane, and this one kind of goes off the edge, but there's a plane. And, and then, if this were a totally rounded rock, then you would just round this off right here. This would be in shadow. This is not in shadow. Um, okay, that one, I show... I actually showed that as if it were extending. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, it, instead of turning it that way, I turned it that way because it wasn't paying any attention. But that's a good thing to show you. All right, so what if it is? What if it does? What if it sort of does that in the plane? You, and if it's a rounded rock, you simply then would round that off, round it off here, and then you look, is it in shadow or not in shadow? And if the light is coming from behind there, that throws that into shadow. And so then all that gets rounded out. It really works well too for doing portraiture. Uh, when, you're, when you look for the planes in the face and you do the initial study uh, by studying the, pl the actual planes and the way they move in the face because there's lots of, there are lots of planes in the face that turn in subtle directions that will define how the person actually appears. 
So if you set it in planes first, this is a drawing exercise for you. Set it in planes first, round out the corners, look for where the light's coming and set the shadows, you're 30% there already. So um, I think maybe it might be helpful. Let me take this one more step before I close it out. I think it might be helpful if you don't really understand planes, if you still find them confusing, well, print out some photographs. Go to pixabay.com and just find some photographs and print those photographs out and then take a pencil and, and actually mark on the photograph itself the direction of the planes, turning the whole thing into planes. You might print out pictures of animals and say cows are wonderful for this. You print out a picture of cows and lots of them are on Pixabay. Uh, they're wonderful for studying planes. Um, and so then if you don't make a big project out of it, keep it general. But if you just throw those major shapes into planes first, you'll begin to understand something of the muscular structure of the animal. And, you be, and then you also, when you, when, once you turn it into planes, look at how the light's hitting it. Before you know it, you'll have the whole thing in three-dimensional form. Hopefully you have it in perspective. And that will give you a wonderful thing to do during your downtime. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.